Welcome back. Well, today I am joined by Dan O'Weiler of Sterling Financial. Hi, Dan. Welcome. How are you today? Hi, Lisa. How are you? Good to be with you. Good. Well, thanks for joining us. Are you guys staying healthy and safe over there? Oh, yeah. Our community is doing a great job. <laughs> yeah. They're well, that, that, I, I know that they took extra precautions over there, so that was good. Yes, they certainly have. And uh, we've been really trying to make sure that they wear their masks and keep their social distancing and so far so good. Well, hopefully uh, we'll have that vaccine out before too long and those that want to take it that will help, you know, this herd immunity that they're talking about, that will, uh, that'll help. Yeah, let's hope so. So uh, retirement planning, you have a few critical steps that we should take into consideration. Well, I, I'm not sure that are, they're my steps. It's just something that we ought to, ought to uh, uh, think about as we go into retirement. And even if we're retired, we ought to be aware of that. You know, and so, you know, I, I sent you over some talking points and I'm not sure which order they're, they're in, but uh, obviously we can talk about all four. But one of the things obviously is, is just be aware of volatility in retirement and don't get too nervous if the market goes down based upon what your plan is. Because I think um, it, as we, it, it, a, prime, a prime example was this year in March when the market uh, was reacting to this whole COVID pandemic and it dropped 35%. Well, it's come all the way back and we're actually up 14% for the year. So don't blow up your plan just because of a little volatility, but as we get older, obviously, we don't want to have our, our money exposed to a lot of volatility. So just be aware that volatility can be okay for a, a portion of our assets, but we don't want to, we want to have a secure foundation going forward and, and, and not blow up our plan just because we had a big crash because the market does have volatility associated with it. JP Morgan Asset Management. Uh, said that 22 of the past 39 years have been uh, really pretty good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the uh, JP Morgan's, basically, they kind of confirm what I just said, that don't be too aware, uh, do, too concerned about uh, the volatility during the year uh, because 22 of those years were ended up being positive. Okay, so like I said, in March, we had that COVID uh, big drop, but at the end of the year, we've actually come out ahead. So 22 out of those years have all been positive when we've had a downturn in the market during the year. Yeah, okay, well, good. So don't be too, you know, just, just be, be aware emotionally that, that you're in a position that it's not going to impact it, your entire portfolio but we can have a portion of it that's uh, uh, set up for growth as opposed to safety. Gotcha. And then um, another one that you mentioned is avoiding risk as you get older. Well, uh, yeah, we kind of go into that as, as people, I have clients that are younger in their forties and other people that are in their seventies and, and how you invest at age 40 is different than how you invest at age 70 because at age 40, you have 20, 25 years to ride the market out and not be too concerned. And, and generally we're trying to build our asset base when we're younger, we wanna have it grow and, and be able to take opportunities in the market and, and build your portfolio. As we start to get into retirement and retire, we want to start protecting what we have. And so in as much as I, I sit down and talk to people, I think we've mentioned this before when I've been there, most of the time, whether or not people earn four to 6% on their money, their lifestyle isn't gonna change if they earn eight to 10. Emotionally, it makes sense or sounds good. Oh, I made eight to 10%, but losing that money will impact their life much more than making an additional three or 4%. And so as we grow older, what I have found is we want to set up this solid base of income that will come in rain or shine, day or night, and protect that foundation. And then if we want to choose 15, 20% of our portfolio to 
grow to offset inflation, that's okay because if we lose that 20%, it isn't going to impact our income because we've got that base already secured. And so the older we get, obviously, the more conservative we become, or at least we should, but that doesn't happen always. I have people sometimes that are frustrated that they're not earning 15 or 20%. Right, right. At what point do we adjust spending? Uh, well, spending habits don't need to be adjusted if we have enough income, okay? It all depends upon our, what our monthly income is. If I've got a pension of $3,500 a month and Social Security of $2,500 a month, that gives me $6,000. Well, if my spending habits is only spending $5,000, I don't have to adjust my spending habits. It's all dependent upon what our monthly needs are because if our income is meeting our monthly needs, then then uh, then we're okay. Where we come into play and then having to adjust our monthly spending habits is when our income doesn't meet our monthly need. And so we need to cut back on maybe how many times we go out to dinner or we'll go to the, well, and we're not going to the show or dinner anymore, but, uh, uh, it, it, it's all dependent upon our monthly income and our monthly expenses. If our monthly expenses outpace our income, then that's where we have to start adjusting our monthly spending habits. Right. Got it. And then being flexible is a key thing, huh? Well, flexible is, is I don't get, I have a lot of people that have are married to their investments. You know, I received this uh, stock from, my dad and, and you know, he, he had it for 30 years and I've never sold it. Well, uh, that particular stock might not fit for what your investment goals are. You might have a very aggressive growth stock when you need to have maybe more income or a dividend producing stock. And so you need to be flexible as you grow older, not to be married to what I call your investment tools. You you need to, some people get married to CDs. Well, CDs were great 20 years ago when we were getting 8%, but mm -hmm. we're only getting, you know, 2% if we're lucky right now. Right. And so right. you can't be married to the same investment vehicle you were when you were age 40. And so you need to be flexible in that. I have a lot of people that it, it, when they go into retirement, they don't want to be in the market anymore. Well, that doesn't make sense because we need some growth to our portfolio. I have other people that don't want to talk about annuities. Well, annuities are a very safe and secure investment vehicle for people that are retired. <clears throat> Excuse me, that doesn't make it right for everybody, but you need to be flexible as you go through you know, your, your planning process. And once you get a plan in place, it's okay to tweak it from time to time, but don't blow it up just because we've had a COVID pandemic, you know? Right. Okay. Well, good sound advice for retiring or, or maybe you're, you've already retired. You need to make some adjustments. So thank you. I know we're going to be talking. Or if, they, or if you hit the lottery. Or yeah. if you hit the lottery. Yeah, when that <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. Aisha, good. Are you uh, sticking around for the holidays? Uh, I don't know yet. Everything is still up in the air. <laughs> okay. All but, right. But we're going to talk to you again, and we're going to do a wrap up for 2020, uh, talking about taxes. Okay. Okay. Uh, and and that may change with the new administration. Exactly. But we'll, we'll talk about it anyway. So thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks. And we'll be right back. <laughs>